My word, look how far we've come. Truth be told, I'm starting to become quite attached to this series, and I think at this rate we'll have covered perhaps the top 50 forgotten horror movies of all time, which is quite an achievement, isn't it? But again, I know that I keep saying it, but really, we couldn't have made this list without you top five scary fans, really. It is a team effort, and for that, I'd like to thank you all for your wonderful insights and contributions. Forgotten horror is forgotten no more, thanks to us all. So, let's get to it, part eight. Hello horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finch, as today, we're curious to take a look at the top five scariest forgotten horror movies, part eight. Part eight. Whew. Really, guys, part eight. Roll the clip. For the curious amongst you, that scene was of course from the 1996 Rip Roarer, The Frighteners, which for the astute amongst you, you'll recognise it as the movie that made its way to the top of our seventh part of this list, and it's awesome, so consider this your friendly, honourable reminder. And also, reason to go and check out all the other parts of this series if you haven't done that already. I know a lot of people call for some movies to appear in this series that have already been covered, but yeah, I'm just trying to be polite, really. Go watch the other seven parts. Anyway, let's begin. Kicking off at number five, The Basement, 2017. You know what, like quite a few entries that have made their way onto this list, the more recent ones, I had completely forgotten about this movie until I sat down to compile this part 8. And I think that's easy to do because on the surface everything about this movie is kind of throwaway. Mundane title, minimal marketing and perhaps a lacklustre indie production. But that's just on the surface because looking back this film is surprisingly brilliant and it's such a well made little horror movie that actually goes much further than its initial promise which is rare. Yeah it's a psychological slasher, serial killer a tight wound kind of drama but beneath all of that is a lot more left to be admired. Also please don't get this movie confused with another film of the same name that was released at pretty much the exact same time because that one sucks. Yeah, indie movies, am I right? Written and directed by Brian M. Connolly and Nathan Ives, two men mostly known for their work in television, The Basement is set in modern day San Fernando where a serial killer known as The Gemini has been kidnapping innocent victims, torturing them and slaying them in his secret underground basement in all manners of different outfits. <laughs> now listen, this film is gross. A lot of the gore in this movie is incredibly explicit and you may feel like this film is gratuitous in its approach, perhaps too much, perhaps more in line with the likes of the later Saw films and Hostel, but listen, again, I know I say this a lot, but don't listen to the critics because this film earns it, particularly given its ending. Also, there is an ample early 90s inspiration for The Basement, particularly reminiscent of films like David Fincher's Seven and perhaps, at times, Small Tones of the Science of the Lambs and Red Dragon. It stars Jack Jackson Davis, Caleb Long and Misha Barton, all of whom give notable performances throughout, particularly Jackson Davis who pretty much steals the show in this open ended horror. Really the basement was often overlooked and still is, but it is certainly worth a watch. Swinging in at number 4, Severance, 2006. I know we're mates, but um, if you look at my cock one more time I'm gonna kick off. What are you talking about? I have not once looked at your winky. I love this movie, and for the British folk amongst you, this film may not be as forgotten as some of the rest that appear on this list, but still, that's reason enough to let the world know about the 2006 horror comedy of sorts that, in all the best ways, in terms of genre, sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah, this film is certainly hilarious for the most part, mainly down to its remarkably understated cast, but it's also straight up terrifying in certain sequences, and some of the gore that outlines the bones of this movie is second to none. And yes, much like our previous list, this film was created by the filmmaker that brought us Creep, Triangle and also 2010's Black Death starring Sean Bean. So yeah, that may give you an inkling as to what you can expect here. Written and directed by Christopher Smith with a story outlined by James Moran, the man responsible for Cockneys vs Zombies, as well as being the writer of 2014's The Borderlands, this movie is definitive of British horror. It tells the tale of a group of office workers, the working staff of the European sales division of an arms corporation who head out for a weekend team building exercise in the Matra Mountains of Hungary when, before they know it, they're coach is scuppered by a fallen tree blocking the road and then heading out on foot the group eventually make their way through the strange and darkened forest where they finally reach their weekend destination, the lodge. An old lodge in the middle of nowhere but unfortunately for them their team building exercise is swiftly about to be gate crashed. I'll say no more because although slightly arbitrary the narrative of this film is certainly worthwhile and some of the dialogue in this movie is downright hilarious. Also talking of hilarious, Danny Dyer stars in this movie and in typical typecast fashion the man plays his role 
to near perfection. Alongside Laura Harris, Babu Cisse, Tim McKinnery and several others, Severance is a horror riot and it's certainly worth your attention. Next up at number 3, Fire in the Sky 1993. Although you may not think it, the truth of the matter is since its release back in 1993, Fire in the Sky has never quite reached the critical acclaim that it's deserving of and because of that, in an otherwise oversaturated sci-fi subgenre, it has sadly fallen down the cracks into the realms of forgotten horror cinema. But don't worry about that because that's why we're here, right? And we can shine that bright light like an alien mothership beaming up a bunch of dazed and confused bloggers. Now, while there are more alien abduction movies than you can shake a probe at in this particular genre, there's something strange about Fire in the Sky that manages to capture both the hysteria and the physicality of the phenomena that has plagued the rural parts of our planet for so damn long. And I don't say that as a quip, not at all in fact, because what this film manages to do, unlike many others, is to walk that very fine tightrope between fact and fiction. And that's impressive, particularly given the subject matter. The film itself is based upon the infamous alleged alien abduction case dubbed the Walton Experience that occurred on November the 5th, 1975 in a remote logging area outside of Snowflake, Arizona. It tells a tale of a man named Travis Walton who, whilst travelling back from his shift with his fellow loggers Mike, Alan, David, Greg and Bobby, they witnessed the flight of a strange, unidentified flying object above the tree line. During the bizarre altercation, Travis is hit by a bright beam of light from the object and the rest of his co workers flee in panic. When they return, Travis is nowhere to be found though, and then boom, we're in it. Alien abduction and or severe mental trauma combined with a twisting tale of panic and disbelief. Really, Fire in the Sky expertly captures the very essence behind the UFO phenomena, perhaps far better than any other movie ever has. Also, the final act of this movie is downright terrifying, it really is, and it invokes imagery similar to Jacob's Ladder or Altered States. If you haven't already, give this film a watch, it truly, truly deserves your attention. Coming in at number two, we are still here, 2015. Hello? What? I think they might be home. Really? Well, isn't that quite the understatement? Ah, no spoilers, because really guys, this film is terrifying and I'm not entirely sure how it managed to fly so firmly beneath the radar and I know many of you more diligent purveyors of indie horror will certainly have seen this movie and appreciated this movie but 2015's We Are Still Here is such a good film that it deserves to be heralded as one of the finest indie horrors of the 2010s. It's that good and the lack of attention it gathered is bizarre to say the least. Written and directed by Ted Gagan, a filmmaker who was often skirted around the more visceral independent approaches to horror cinema, 2015's We Are Still Here is his first attempt at directing a full-length feature film, which in this regard, although it doesn't undermine his previous attempts at horror shorts and film production, it is certainly a remarkable debut effort. The man's got experience. Also, more recently, he's the guy that penned the story for 2019's Satanic Panic, so yeah, it's pretty indicative. Set in 1979, we are still here, tells the tale of a couple, Anne and Paul, who after grieving over the death of their young son, Bobby, decide to move to a new home in rural New England. We've seen this story before, haven't we? However, in typical fashion, emotions begin to fray and Anne spirals into a deep depression where she's convinced that the spirit of her son has followed them to their new home. After doing some digging though, it turns out that their new house has a far more bloody history. Built in the 1800s, it was owned by a strange and bizarre family known as the Dagmas, who operated the house as a sort of funeral home and were allegedly chased out of town when the townsfolk discovered that the Dagmas were instead selling on the corpses of the deceased and instead burying empty caskets. I'll say no more because this film has a lot for you to sink your teeth into, but although this is very much a traditional horror tale, We Are Still Here has such a remarkable reverence for genre horror and its approach to telling this story is a sheer joy to bear witness to. And also, don't let that overstate the fact that this film is genuinely terrifying. If you want to see how jump scares should be done in horror, take a look at this film because truly it's a masterclass. And finally, coming in at number one spot, Martin, 1978. My name is Martin. Martin. I'm 84 years old. Martin. People think I'm crazy when I tell them how old I am. Is this a vampire movie? Or more importantly, is this the finest non-vampire vampire movie ever made? Yeah, I think it just might be. The thing is though, depending on which way you look at it, either this film is a vampire horror or it's one of the finest psychological studies of a fractured human mind ever captured in horror cinema. 
Also, it's on YouTube, so watch it. Either way, it all sounds pretty remarkable for me, and perhaps more so than any of the films captured on this list. With Martin, we are truly in for a treat. Now, back in the 70s, whilst George A. Romero was defining the zombie genre, in 1977, he took a break from the ravenous living dead and created one of the most original horror movies ever made. The fact that it is, for the most part, completely overlooked by the horror fan base is certainly food for thought, but thankfully, Films like this are still kicking about down there in the dusty shelves of forgotten horror cinema. Written and directed by George A. Romero, the legend of horror cinema himself considered this one to be his favourite. It tells the tale of a young man, of course, named Martin, who following the suicide of his mother is dumped on a train and sent to live with his strange great uncle in the small town of Braddock, just outside of Pittsburgh. From the off though, something is strange about Martin, and the opening scene illustrates his incredibly strange and particular thirst. The strange thing is though, Martin himself is such an oddity of a character. He's not a sore thumb at all, but more of a wallflower, and he carries out these visceral and painstaking acts with a very strange sort of grace and calm. I almost don't want to say any more, but the opposing narratives that form the basis of this movie are delivered from such a remarkably unique perspective that I'm fairly certain horror cinema has never seen anything like this before, or perhaps will again. It's really, really unique. Really, Martin is a forgotten horror gem that is certainly worth rediscovering. Give it a watch. Well, there we have it, horror fans. Our eighth instalment in this series, the top five scariest forgotten horror movies. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Disagree? Have any more to add to this list? Then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as any choice picks that you may have to add. Before we depart from this video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. DC Carter says, If I ever went and explored a scary location, I would want Jack to come along. He seems like nothing would faze him. Cheers, Jack. Well, Thank you, DC Carter, that's incredibly kind. But as the old saying goes, fear is a great motivator. I don't trust anyone who isn't scared of at least something. You just have to respect that fear. My mantra is always, tread softly and carry a big stick, particularly in the dark. Well, perhaps there's a lesson there. Unfortunately, though, that's what we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear, hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy. <laughs>